For our Emmys 2020 contenders panel today, we have five of the greatest cinematographers working on television, and that includes David Mullen, who's already won an Emmy for Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Uh, David, tell us about that that night and winning your first Emmy. It was uh, it was almost surreal because I didn't expect it. I was up against some huge shows and uh, just came out of the blue. You know, I, I don't even, I hardly remember what I said or anything. It was just it was, it was an exciting moment. Um, it was a lot of fun. Well, so many on your show, behind the scenes, craftspeople, actors, Amy and Dan, they've all won Emmys. So that, that must be a big celebration when you all get together like that. Yeah, it's, it, we're all pretty proud of the show. Tell me about your episode that you're submitting from season three called Comedy or Cabbage and why that one was the, the, the best one in your mind to submit to the voters. It just, uh, the episode contains some of my favorite sequences. The, the whole last half of the episode is this uh, long uh, sequence, this date that Lenny Bruce takes Midge on. And, and first uh, they go to a recreation of a, um, we recreated a show called uh, uh, Playboy's Penthouse, which is also called uh, Playboy After Dark sometimes is a Hugh Hefner show in Chicago. We create our own version called Miami After Dark. So I was recreating actual shots from the uh, from the original footage of the original the TV show, and then uh, we he goes takes her to a Cuban nightclub, and I recreated a shot from I Am Cuba, which is one of my favorite films, and then he takes her back to his uh, hotel at twilight and we have this walk and talk and magic hour along the water which is quite fun so those three sequences together was just a real highlight of, of the season to shoot and talking about miami you've got the sweeping shots of the hotel and 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 things like that so what is the secret for you from your end when you're when you're doing those kind of long the choreography that it takes to do long takes it's really down to the skill of, of Amy in uh, terms of directing those shots. She, she thinks like a dancer. She moves the extras and the actors like, like dancers. And we actually often have a choreographer on set to coordinate the extras. We, we use dancers to, to, as extras often because we need them to cross the lens at just the right moment as the camera moves. So it's all a dance with the camera. And, and my job in a way is just to sort of pull it off photographically, you know, we got to the um, first big shot in that episode was when she arrives at the Fontainebleau Hotel. And we obviously wanted to establish the hotel with the fountains in front and then the cab pulling up, them getting out and they get out of the cab and they go into the lobby. And on the tech scout, I looked at Amy and I said, I bet you'd love to do this all in one shot. Just, she hadn't said it yet, but she, I knew it was coming. And she goes, yes, yes, that, can you do that? And I'm like, well, we have to sort of move over the water and the fountain would require a technocrane, but you want to rise up and fly over the chandeliers in the lobby, which requires another technocrane. So we're going to actually have to get two technocranes and attach a movie to it and disconnect, follow them through the cabs, through the doors, then reconnect to a second crane in the lobby, fly up, come down again, disconnect again. So it was just, a, you know, just figuring out the mechanics of the shot were hard enough. And then I had to figure out how to light the whole lobby once we come into the doors there. That's the sort of challenges I have on this show. You know, that we imagine a big shot and then I have to figure out how I'm going to actually light it when I'm seeing ceiling the floor and side to side. Everybody on our panel today, we've talked about uh, what a good relationship and a special relationship they have with the creators, showrunners of the program. What, what about you and Amy and Dan? Why does that, why do you all fit well together? Well, they hired me for the pilot and got along great ever since. Um, you know, they're just geniuses with writing and directing and, and working with actors. And I'm just trying to sort of keep up with their level of creativity. I think um, besides me sort of pulling off what they have in their mind, I think where we're simpatico is that we have a sort of love of old movies. Um, there's a, it's not expressed so much in the lighting. The lighting is, tries to be naturalistic for the most part, but it's, um, the style of the show, the energy has is, is got a kind of old Hollywood uh, glamour to it at times. And, and we're often talking about musicals and, uh, you know, talking about cabaret, talking about Arthur Freed and GM musicals. I remember once waiting for a setup in the middle of the woods 
and the Catskills, we had time to kill. And I, I started watching uh, the Lumberjack, the uh, dance in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers with Amy. I mean, we just watched that whole dance number while we're waiting for a magic hour to come in the woods there. But we just love these old movies, these musicals. And I think it, it sort of infuses the work a little bit, even though we're not always to, you know, copying that style necessarily. Well, you mentioned Magic Hour a moment ago. When you're thinking about any scenes, interior or exterior, what what's going through your thought process about lighting and colors and tones and and the vision that you're trying to develop on a, on a given episode? Well, in day exterior work, there's often we move the camera so much that it's not much I can do other than to try to shoot when the sun is at the right angle. Um, otherwise, it's a lot of natural light outside. The magic hour work takes much more coordination. But when I get the script in general, I'm I'm trying to think of what the color schemes might be, not just in production design, but in terms of time of day. For example, in the second season, we went to Paris in the first two episodes. And having seen that Paris was a very warm-toned city, especially at night, it's all lit with these golden uh, sodium vapor lights. I just uh, decided that all the New York scenes should have a kind of cold wintry feel just so that when we're intercutting New York and Paris um, you would see that color difference and this episode we go to Miami the question was how is Miami going to look different than New York other than the obvious uh, ways and getting down there to the city it's just you're just hit with all the blue and green the between the palm trees and the blue sky and the ocean and the swimming pools there's a kind of aquamarine you know, color to the everything. So I was sort of determined not to try to push away from that and give it a kind of warm golden look, but rather embrace all those blues and greens in the frame and knowing that would contrast with the New York scene. So in this case, I let New York play on the warm side rather than the cold side with a lot more um, kind of golden interiors and things uh, when we cut back to Manhattan, just to create a visual contrast. And again, with the magic hour at the end, I went for a kind of blue twilight look rather than a golden sunrise look. I want to ask you as well uh, about some of the cast members. Let's start with Rachel uh, Brosnahan. Uh, what, what kind of relationship do you have with her? And and what do you, she's such a revelation on this show from from the pilot on. What, what do you see when you're looking at her through your camera lens? The, all the cast are just wonderful to work with. It's really... They're just fun and, and delightful and kind and caring people and just immensely talented. Uh, she's just amazing to watch. I mean, we do a lot of these scenes in one shot and the cast will have to memorize, you know, 10 pages of dialogue sometimes and play it without a stop. So uh, just the sheer professionalism and energy that they all bring and what Rachel brings is, is just insane. And uh, she's just a delight to photograph too. I mean, she just... She's, um, you know, the way she's costumed uh, and it just everything about her is just, uh, you know, great for the camera lens, you know, just, we do a lot of steady cam work with sort of wide angle lenses, which is normally difficult sometimes to uh, always flatter your cast when you're kind of moving around them on a 24 mil lens, but um, everyone just looks so good in front of the lens that it's really not as hard as you think. Uh, just, it's it's great to work with the, uh, you know, in sets and costumes and the cast that's just so photogenic. It just makes my life a lot easier. Another one I wanted to ask about, I could ask about every single cast member, but I wanted to ask about Jane Lynch because she's essentially playing two characters, even though they're the same woman. The one on stage that the audience of, of that time period knows and the one that we see that she really is off camera. Uh, do you shoot her any differently from one to the other? Well, when she's on stage as her um, her comedic character, uh, she's always in stage lighting. So in a sense, she, that look is, is comes from the fact that she's in this artificial environment with a lot of bright stage lighting on her. Um, it was different when she played the Miss Julie stage number because that was her not doing her typical comedy act or she, she ends up playing it by the end. And in that case, we went for a realistic Broadway drama lighting scene. We actually hired the Broadway lighting designer to come in and design the lighting for the play. But we told them that by the last section, they had to get kind of brighter and 
sunnier and, and, and funnier because she was sort of playing this broad character by the last sequence. Even though technically Miss Julie actually all takes place in one time period. We, we started out late afternoon, went into night, and then back into sunrise by the end of the, the, the uh, play, just to sort of match the way the changes she was making to the character. But most of what I filmed with Jane was her, her off screen, off stage character, the kind of rich, haughty, um, you know, person that she plays. And uh, it's always elegantly dressed in these ex sort of exquisite locations. Uh, her house, uh, you know, it's, that was sort of part of uh, the persona and, and I got to play a lot with that. 